Dear friends, Shabbat Shalom. Our inspiration for Shabbat video for this week was recorded earlier in the week prior to, to Russia's aggressions and prior to the war in Ukraine. And I wanted to add, before getting back to our regularly scheduled programming, to, to add these words of, well, a blessing of prayer. When we say Shabbat Shalom, the emphasis well, this week and always is on that word Shalom. Shalom, of course, in our own homes, but our prayers are intensified this week as we pray for Shalom in, in Ukraine. And I wanted to quote the words of Rabbi Ephraim Mervis, the chief rabbi of the UK, who wrote a beautiful prayer. And included in the words of his prayer are the following. May you protect all innocent men, women, and children at this moment of great peril for them, for their country, for Europe and the world. Incline the hearts of national leaders towards peace and reconciliation and bless them with the wisdom, vision, and perseverance needed to end this war and restore peace to the region. Almighty God, strengthen the hands of those who pursue peace, not war. Bring harmony where there is hostility, relief where there is pain, and hope where there is despair. May he who makes peace in high places make peace for all on earth. V'chein yihi ratzon, may this be your will, and let us say, Amen. And now to our regularly scheduled Devar Torah. Shabbat Shalom. The great mystical story in our tradition is called the Pardes, the Orchard. It's found in the Talmud and Tractate Chagiga and actually was studied this past week as part of the Daf Yomi, which is the cycle of daily Talmudic study. And it tells the story of, of the Orchard, this deep mystical place which no one knows what's inside, but four are brave enough to encounter it, four sages. Their names are Ben Azai, Ben Zoma, Alicia Ben Avuya, and Rabbi Akiva. And each has a different response upon entering the Pardes. Each responds to that place of, of deep mysticism, of secrets, in a different way. The first, Ben Azai, he loses his life. The second, Ben Zoma, loses his sanity. The third, Alicia Ben Avuya, whose nickname is Acher, the other, the outsider, his response is to lose his faith. And Rabbi Akiva, as the Talmud says, Nichnas b'shalom, v'yatsa b'shalom. He entered in peace, and he left in peace as well. When encountering complexity, depth, and even chaos, how do we achieve that that level of peace, that Rabbi Akiva level of peace. In our Torah portion this week, we're, we're presented with Moses gathering the entire people, and this is coming in the aftermath of the sin of the golden calf, and this is coming in the aftermath of the forgiveness, and this is coming in the aftermath of last week's Torah portion, which included all that, and also included the gift of the second tablets, of God giving the tablets to Moses once again. It's an extraordinary moment in the history of the people. And how do you follow that? How do you follow all of that action? How do you follow, yes, the chaos of that moment? And so Moses gathers all the people and gives them the commandment. What's the commandment? Tells them to observe Shabbat. Shabbat is the key to moving past chaos. As Rabbi Nachman of Breslov wrote and as he taught that Shabbat is that moment in which all of the thoughts that have been moving around throughout the week, all of the chaotic moments and, and of intellect and understanding of trying to understand the world. And this is an era before, before media and before social media and before text messages and before push notifications, before everything was encroaching on our, on our life and on our privacy and on our, on our intention, attention. And Rabbi Nachman says, Shabbat is the time to push all of that away, to turn it off, and to allow our souls to be restored, and to allow our minds to be refocused. And not only that, he says, Shabbat is not just relegated for, to Shabbat. Shabbat should be included in every single day. As part of the other six days of the week, one should always try to find a moment of Shabbat, of clarity, of shalom of peace. And part of the approach of Shabbat is that on Shabbat it's the day in which we cease from creativity and we stop involving ourselves in the world in the way that we do in the other 
in the other days, we stop manipulating the world and start to focus on our own response to the world. I'm reminded of that, that great proverb of the farmer who has a prized horse and, and the horse runs away. And the farmer's neighbor comes over and says, oh, that's too bad that, that your horse has run away. And the farmer says, well, we'll see. And sure enough, a few days pass and the horse comes back and, and with it, it brings 10 other wild horses. What a blessing. And so the neighbor comes over and says, oh, isn't that wonderful? You have all these new horses. Isn't that great? And the farmer says, we'll see. And then the farmer's son is riding one of the new horses and the horse is a little bit too wild and the, the, and the young man, the young boy falls off the horse and breaks his leg. And the neighbor comes over and says, oh, that's, that's really too bad. And the farmer says, we'll see. And then in comes the army, in comes the czar's army to conscript the young man, the healthy young man and the farmer's son has a broken leg and can't join the army. And the neighbor comes over and says, wow, what a blessing. And the farmer says, we'll see. So much of life is trying to process these moments and trying to process these developments. Is it good? Is it not? Is it a blessing? Is it a curse? But the response and the one response we can have is how we react. And the ideal of Shabbat, it's not to be passive, but it's to be in control. It's to have a sense of shalom, to be like, like Rabbi Akiva in that chaotic place of the orchard of the deep mysticism, of the unknown, of which so much of our life is reflected. We just don't know, we just don't understand. But to be nichnas b'shalom, v'yotzei b'shalom, to enter in peace and to leave in peace does not mean to step back and do nothing, but it means to be in full control of how we respond to the challenges of the world. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat is known as Shabbat Mevarachim, the Shabbat on which we bless the arrival of a new month in the coming week. And that month is Adar Bet, or Adar Sheni, the second month of Adar. As you know, in a leap year, we add an extra month, not just an extra day. Birkat HaChodesh is a particularly beautiful text in which we ask for so many things that are so essential to our lives things that we have come to appreciate even more over the last couple of years. Chayim shel shalom, a life of peace. Shel tova, of goodness. Shel bracha, of blessing. Shel parnasa, of sustenance. Chayim shel chilutz atzamot, of physical health. And finally, we ask for chayim sheyimalu mishalot libenu litova, a life in which all of our heart's desires are fulfilled for good. So may it be for this month and for every month. Chodesh Tov, Shabbat Shalom. Shall <laughs> Parma
Oh, 